Hi again, hello. We are in the deep dive of the STOP team. And here's a topic we are diving into now, the failure of teams. And here's the numbers right away. 90% of startups fail, 80% of business partnerships. A huge number. So that's why we have to get into this reality check and really understand that this divorce rate for business partners is actually that high. You have a very, very low probability of succeeding. You have to get that into your mind and heart that you are trying to do something really hard. And business partnership means the people in your team. You are married to the people in your team. It's the not even second, it's the most important um, partnership you will enter into if you're starting something together with team members, a business. It's very hard to get out of it and it's gonna hurt a lot. It's gonna cost you a lot, um, much more than in your personal relationships. Ninety percent of startups fail. So, adding another ten percent to that. Not only on the personal level, you have a very, very high risk that something will go wrong, but as a startup, as a small business that um, attempts to find traction in the market, it's also ninety percent you only have a 10% chance to succeed. So please let that sink into yourself. Um, that's why we are here, that we are trying to uh, use the sandbox as a, as a visual reminder that we are trying something that is hard. Doesn't mean you should not do that. Um, the successful people Many of them, you know, have tried several times and it takes between three to 10 years to know if you started something that is actually worth pursuing. So let me look into the experiences um, when failure happens. Let's look into those stories that people tell uh, when they have failed at something new, fast, or big. Here is the, the learnings that I have brought to you from that experience of uh, initiating and uh, having held up to 27 volumes of uh, uh, fuck up nights. What are the main mistakes? What are the people talking about? First one, Superman syndrome, the yes, I can. You fall completely in love with the idea that you have and you will just see success. Your mind will somehow block out the things, the signs that you need to see um, and you will just bulldoze over them and uh, uh, hit the wall eventually. Overestimating the honesty of stakeholders. This is definitely, I'm guilty. Um, I'm not thinking of people in a way that they are you know, possibly lying to me or trying to uh, uh, get a better deal out of uh, whatever they are trying to, to get in an agreement. Very, very big uh, point here. You need to have a lot of knowledge, knowledge about people and feeling about people if they are honest with you. Underestimating the situation around you, uh, for example, cultural issues in the sense of where you're going into a different kind of a market with different language and backgrounds. That's a very common mistake and not a very easy one, but it's one you can prepare for and you have to account for if you're um, attempting something that is uh, crossing country borders. And then it's about the business partnerships, uh, one of the most often uh, told stories that came my way. The lessons for those big mistakes Listen, 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 check again and search again and do your homework. Um, communication is the key here. 
and being clear about uh, yeah how partnerships look like how you work together as a team and starting small and then only grow so do things step by step another reason for the sandbox approach uh, that we are trying out this semester together now possible reasons why it could happen uh, that you fail. Now here I have it again, number one reason, the weak communication. Lack of networking and partnering with other organizations outside the team. This is the reason why we have the stop partnership um, coming from all, especially technical entrepreneurs, take time and invest into networking. This is what is driving your business success. Number three, the vision of the team leaders and the day-to-day -day work somehow in the team don't fit together. So remember, uh, I've said this alignment on the same purpose that connects you as a team, that's really the glue. And here named again as uh, a reason for failure if it doesn't work out. Wasting time on daily problems and not going for the bigger goals and strategies uh, is number four. Poor operating strategies. Um, the team members do not own the plan. I would say again, one number that could um, summarize under, uh, you know, a unified purpose, then everybody owns the plan. Number six by not doing the right things in the right way at the right time. That's an easy said one, but this is really the, the crucial thing. What are the right things for you to do today? Number seven, poor management, poor time management, uh, very much connected to number six as well. What's the right time? How long is the right time? Number eight, weak productivity of some of your team members and the conflict management number nine, that fails. Yeah, remember back when we were talking about the team building phases, uh, the storming, of course, uh, can happen. Conflict can also happen in the norming or the, in the production. Um, phase of your team, but there will be conflicts that come up. There will be differences in perception or um, different decisions that uh, people want to take in different ways. And these conflicts have to be managed. You have to be able to overcome different viewpoints. This also plays into the number 10, um, if your team members don't play into their strength, but into weaknesses, you of course are not using uh, your team members skills and abilities in the most efficient way. Not only most efficient, also most uh, fun way. Don't highlight the weaknesses of your team. Talk about those weaknesses and uh, Take a different role. Take a role that is close to your strengths. That is your strength. Number 12, opportunities for change are being ignored. There's always, uh, you know, possibilities and opportunities coming your way. Um, even if you have to change, for example, your idea completely. Um, if such opportunities come your way, try to be vigilant, try to be able to identify, yes, we need to change, we need to adapt. Don't ignore what's coming towards you. Number 13, too much exchange of people. We had that topic. Um, very typical um, problem in startups. Yeah, exchanging the people in your team is not anything you should do. It has negative uh, consequences throughout the way. Find your team, stick with your team, 
and become productive with your team. Number 14, same direction, job description become more important than personal contributions. If you're a startup or your organization, maybe even the, the company you work for, if, if, if a company you know, turns into something where job descriptions are everything that counts or you know, labels and uh, position names are more important then what everybody personally brings to the table, um, that's about five minutes to 12. Number 15, lack of interpersonal team building skills. See this one is actually maybe, uh, you know, you would have thought it's, you know, much higher up in the list um, that, you know, our personal skills of being able to work with others in a team. Um, yeah, are, are the most um, probable failure that will happen, but it's already only on the point number 15 here. And you can work on them. You can really uh, improve your um, yeah communication skills and um, by practice. That's why we are in the sandbox. Some examples, very well known, business partnerships that went down in flames my favorite one is the Beatles. I, um, yeah, I wish they would have been able to overcome their conflicts. They had those conflicts based on uh, uh, business decisions that it had to be taken um, in their company when they started to make uh, yeah, a huge amount of money when they were really successful. And that's a real shame. It's about the creativity, the music, um, yeah, that, that magic that brought them together and the business conflicts brought them apart. A big shame. But there's also good examples. And um, I'm sure you know maybe the Ben and Cherry's ice cream, but uh, you don't know much about the story behind it. And it's actually two friends that um, started this company very, very, very long back. And um, they both had a passion for food and they both had the desire to do more than just profit, to make more than just money. And that's um, where they connected, where they were giving back to their community, to their customers. And it's what made them happy. Like Jerry Greenfield said, we measured our success, not just by how much money we made, but by how much we contributed to to uh, our communities. So it is possible you are um, up against something that is hard to do, but it is possible to succeed. I brought a couple of more numbers here about the teamwork in previous courses. Um, how happy were people with those results? And um, somehow it's, uh, yeah, not surprising, but it's still, um, you know, even in the setting that we have now together where we are building this up very consciously, even then we have only a little bit more than half of the people really happy with what they are doing. You know, you, if you take the last, uh, you know, number, the points five, four and three together, we still have 20%. Okay, we have our 80 and 80 to 20 um, distribution here. Yeah, so this is the reality in the sandbox. Why did it happen like that in previous courses? We didn't really plan the work for the document. A group member didn't do his part. There were some new members coming in. Um, they didn't have enough uh, um, time management, so you know communication would run properly. I did not understand the work clearly. That's the topics we had and the main points that um, are in my recommendation for you to really try to make a very, very good use of the time to work with your team here. 
People Surging Ahead as well is named here. The work was not um, distributed evenly. I believe we had motivation problems. So how does that sound? Does it sound familiar now? And it sounds like that's exactly what you expected uh, as the reasons, um, the practical reasons why things don't work out. Okay, so this is what you have to account for before you get into it and have a rule on how to treat such a situation when somebody is not happy, when somebody feels the work has not been distributed evenly. How do you deal with those kind of situations? So that's my recommendations. When you build your team rules, how you want to work together, um, sketch out some situations and how you want to deal with them when they happen. That will give you a big advantage in your teamwork. So the team that doesn't have what it takes to succeed, how does that team look like? Well, turning it around again, it's really about having this diversity of, of skills, of talents and experiences. And that clue, that important part that is hard to explain, that trust that you have to have. Um, and also the authority for the tasks that you have taken over, the responsibilities that you have taken over to be able to decide um, and control those tasks in the way you want. You're being trusted with a certain task and people respect you for the input that you bring. If there's one thing you remember out of this part, it's really about this last part here in the red box. It's about complementing each other's strengths and mitigating each other's weaknesses. So take the courage to talk about your strengths and weaknesses and put your plan together in a way that everybody plays to his or her strength. Does that make sense? Thank you very much for listening. And questions, questions you have in your mind now, don't let them go away, capture them. Capture them to talk to your team and capture them yourself to reflect upon them.